everyone. Welcome to this week's Karma Cards. I'm so, I'm so tired of the headaches, guys. There's so many headaches. And that's because we've got a lot of solar activity happening, a lot of just flashes and flares and CMEs still coming in. This is the most we've ever gotten. We're getting so many upgrades and you're going to feel it. Um, and so just like, I feel like 2024 is coming on so strong, <laughs> too strong, too strong. Usually I feel better in the evening. Let me know. Do you like, I noticed that. Okay. So why do we feel better in the evening? Because there is an influx in negative ions, negative ions, even though they sound bad, they're actually quite good for us. They're very, um, they're very soothing. They help us feel peaceful and relaxed and, uh, every evening we get those negative ions. So if you've ever gone for a walk in the evening, you'll notice it feels really good, right? Like you come home and you feel really serene. Things like our technology emit a lot of positive ions and those create that feeling of tension and stress. And um, they, if we're in an environment with too much positive ions, then we can actually start to feel really um, aggravated and it's easier to start fights with people because everyone's kind of on edge. And that's why you want something like, see that right there, that salt lamp? So salt lamps help to emit negative ions and cancel out the positive ones. But I'm telling you, I feel like the reason I bring all that up is just because it, in the evening, usually I feel better because there's just more negative ions in the air. And lately I feel like I'm doing better during the day. And then in the evening as the, that starts to roll in, I feel like this headache come on. So I know something's shifting in here because of all the solar radiation that we're getting. It's doing a lot of cellular turnover. I just did, what was it last week? Oh my gosh. Yes. Last week was the full moon in Leo spirit circle and the Arcturian council came through again and they talked a lot about the cellular turnover in our body. And of course, I'm capturing that recording and I'm gonna put it on my podcast, the Modern Mystic Soul Podcast, so that you can listen to it too, because it was really fascinating stuff, but it was explaining why we're, there was a lot of people feeling nauseous or dizzy, vertigo symptoms. Um, I, I guess the headachey thing could go with that too, but it was explaining what was going on at the cellular level and how our body is in the midst of this metamorphosis that we're under and we're like there's parts of us that have already managed the metamorphosis and other parts that are yet to go through their transition po point so it's going to be a really interesting listen be sure to check it out it'll come out next week it's coming out Tuesday February 6th so it'll be on the channel at that point but yeah, I'm tired of the headaches. It's hard to concentrate. It's hard to rally to like I was doing the um, shining the light on podcast. We've moved that to rumble, by the way, I'm trying to also have it be on YouTube so that those of you who are on YouTube aren't missing it. But if you're wondering where that went, it didn't go anywhere. We're just trying it out on rumble because it allows us to connect to all these other channels much more easily than um, the way we were doing it before because we were recording through Zoom before. Now, when we record in Rumble, we can actually record on YouTube and X and Facebook all at the same time. So we're trying that out. <laughs> and if you're wondering where it is, go check out Rumble. Um, and then I'm going to try and import it over here. Anyway, I was recording that earlier today and I needed to take a little buffer between recording that video and this one and usually I take a little break, but it was like, it's hard to rally with this energy. It's really intense. And what's interesting is on an astrological level, it's kind of a quiet week. There's nothing really big happening this week. It's sort of leftover stuff from last week. Last week was more intense. This week's pretty astrologically quiet but we're processing a lot from last week. So last week is when all that activations in astrology went off, but we're processing it more this week, which is also very tiring, right? Like, so the processing of something can be almost more tiring than going through it, I feel like, because going through it was just the activation. Now we're processing, and that means it's going deeper in. 
So you might also be feeling easily tired, easily exhausted, or just more emotional and sensitive. And then maybe I'm just more emotional and sensitive. I'm, that's a possibility. Anyway, so not a lot going on. The next uh, new moon in Aquarius will be on Friday, February 9th. So I'll put a link below if you want to join us for that. But when we get closer to that, I'll talk to you about it. But astrology wise, kind of like we're, we're actually in a cycle right now, which was is really interesting. So we are definitely deepening some lessons right now. We're deepening some awareness right now, which is again, the processing part, which means, okay, so we've got several planets in the sign of Capricorn. We've had a Capricorn stellium going on. Capricorn is sort of the work sign and it is deep, long work and it can be a little bit exhausting, but it's so beneficial. It, it leads to good things. It's, but it's heavy. <laughs> like that's just a heavier energy. And we've been going through that for weeks. We've been under this sort of same planetary influence or the same sign coming in through different planets, activating the work we need to do in different areas and the dynamics that they create. So you might find that like you're really honed in on certain areas of your life or certain issues, patterns or behaviors are really coming to the surface. And it's not only you that's getting awareness. You might be getting a lot of messages, messages from the universe, messages from others, situations that bring your awareness to it. That's all happening right now. So again, it's just a, a lot. We're just under this mass repeating energy right now where it's really trying to clean and clear and get us on the right track as we move forward. And you're going to be feeling that. Um, and if you are, make sure that you're doing things to help yourself during this process, because when we're doing deep cleaning on patterns in our life and the things that we need to clean up, it can be easy for the ego to get activated in that. Even though ironically, the thing that's getting cleaned is the ego. It can also get very activated and we can get more judgmental of ourselves. We can become more defensive. We can just kind of shut down a little. So it's really important that while we're going through all this deep cleaning of the subconscious and our patterns and the healing that needs to get done, that we're also very gentle with ourselves in the process so that we're, we're taking good care of ourselves because this will pass. The load will feel lighter, even if right now it kind of feels just dense and stodgy and emotional. Even if that's happening, it will lighten up. And what's going to help you is, you know, making sure that you're taking care of your body to it the optimum ability, right? So we're staying hydrated, we're making sure we're getting good sleep or we're resting or we're doing gentle exercise and not exercise that's forcing us um, into a stress state. Even though that stress state is a positive stress with exercise, we still wanna be really easy with how much we apply to the body right now because we're going through so much. So the message from the team this week is a pretty simple one and it's just about honoring your own energy as well as the energy of others because we're all going through this shift together and even though it always feels like we're on different pages on some level we're all on the same page and so when we're going through these energetic upheavals where so much stuff is coming up we need to know our own limits as well as the limits of others and what i mean by that is that okay, there's this processing, purging, clearing energy going on right now. And uh, if you're like me, your brain want it's like a Rubik's cube. It's like, I gotta figure this out because I wanna be out of it, right? And I think most people kind of feel that way when we're uncomfortable or struggling with something, the, the mind can kind of get fixated on it, really wanna dig in there and figure this out. And like I said, that's not necessarily the most gentle approach because again, that can lead to, you know, feelings of insecurity, feelings of judgment, feelings of shame or guilt. It, it can be pretty deep when you're trying to clear this out. So you've got to honor your energy and be like, there's only so much time I can give to this and then I need to give myself peace and rest. And at this time, there's so much uh, relief in being able to express and share that with someone else. That's, that's always true, right? Like if you're a talker like me, 
talking about it with someone is probably the most therapeutic thing you can do. Um, or sharing that information with other people. It just helps you feel like you can get it in perspective and see it from a different angle. And we should be sharing with each other, right? We should be um, there for each other. We just want to be clear with ourselves that there's a limit, there's a real cap to what people have available right now because everyone is shifting. So we want to honor our limits as well as the limits of others and sort of have, we're being asked because we're ready to, to have that level of self-awareness where it's like, okay, this thing I'm going through right now feels like a bottomless pit and I am processing it. I'm not really, I don't feel myself getting anywhere. You probably are, but you might not feel like you're getting anywhere. And you, you sort of have a need to kind of go over it and over again, right? Break over the coals, look for any missing piece of information you can get and wanting to do that with other people. And we need to be careful that one, we're honoring our own limits, that there's a certain amount of digging that's helpful. And then there's just a point where you're starting to exhaust yourself. And so allowing yourself to put the puzzle down so that you can just relax and be, you know, meditate, nap, disconnect in a mindful way so that you can just let that settle and work itself out to a degree. But there's sometimes when we're with other people, you know, and we're caring about each other and you're a giver, if you're a giver type person, you might want to give people like a lot of space to work that out with you. And you don't realize you're exhausting yourself and they don't realize they're exhausting themselves and that you're exhausting each other. Meaning like we're, we don't want to overutilize our resources. Now this doesn't mean we keep it in and doesn't mean we don't talk about it. It just means that we need to give ourselves limits at this time because there's so much coming up to clear and process and you're doing the work even when you're asleep. Your subconscious mind will continue to clear uh, and help you heal even as you are resting. So we want to find that beautiful balance of being able to express and investigate and be in the energy of it and then find that sort of happy stopping point for a period of time so that we can just allow ourselves to decompress. We want to make sure that we're giving that space to other people as well. I mean, some people are very demonstrative in what they're going through. It's like, you know what they say, you can read them like an open book. You know something's going on. Their energy just feels like more intense than other people. There are other people who are really good at keeping that energy covered. Like it's almost like nothing, is anything phasing you? Like, don't you feel this? And they're just, it's just really deep with them. You're not seeing that energy. And it can be easy to mistake that as you have this amazing capacity. You can just hold all of this stuff. And that's not necessarily the case. There's just different ways of expressing it. So we're going to have to kind of be our, our own therapist in a way. And what I mean by that is not that you have to figure this out by yourself and only to counsel with yourself. I mean, a therapist has hours, right? Like a, a therapy appointment has a time limit on it, right? So there's a time for expressing and then the appointment is done. And we almost have to operate like that. Like there's a time I'm allotting myself to deeply go into this and work on it and possibly involve another person, but then I'm also going to bring it to a close and have that time of a break until the next time I go back in. And we're being asked to do that for ourselves because it's it's exhausting otherwise if you're constantly rolling it over in your mind. And I think you can feel that, right? I mean, I feel like everybody's feeling that to a degree. And, and there's a point that we can do it before we feel exhausted and I think that's the thing they want us to really hit is we don't have to wait till we hit a wall till we feel like we've spent everything and we're just done. We can actually reserve some of that energy that we're using towards um, dissecting these issues and clearing them. We can kind of reserve some of that energy. So there's a point where it's like, I've done the work for the day and now I'm off, right? And, and if we look at it like that, then we find that nice balance. Like for example, I've got my own things I'm working through. I just talked about it uh, this week on the Modern Mystic Soul podcast about being vulnerable and going through the mastery of working on uh, responsiveness versus reaction. 
And I did a whole episode about that where I talked to you from time out. <laughs> and if you want to hear that, you can check out the podcast. Um, but there was, I gosh, I want to say it was like last Monday. I may have overdone it. Like I just felt spent working on, you know, working on my issue of mastery and wanting to be more responsive and all the ways that I, I am responsive, but then all the ways that I still find myself going into reactivity when I don't need to. Right. Um, and spending a lot of time working out that topic and kind of talking about it and breaking it down. And I used up pretty much all my energy to that day working on it. And I'd liken it to like working overtime. Like I was spent after that. And of course the evening headache came and that just didn't make it any fun. Where yesterday I also mentally working through it um, and doing my regular day-to-day -day work I do, but I put a hard stop on it and I said, nope, at this point I am stopping and I'm reserving some of this energy for a creative time. That's one of the ways that I unwind is by sitting down and painting and just working in my sketchbooks and working out ideas of things I'd like to work on. And that felt so much better. I was allowing myself a space of peace where this issue is an issue in progress. It is a work in progress, right? It's something that I am working through and getting deeper understanding around, but I didn't have to spend all day on it. So I got a nice dichotomy of how it feels to be like overly invested in the issue and wearing myself out versus being invested in the issue, but allowing myself a time to take a break and put the puzzle down, right? And enjoy my life. And that's the balance they're asking us to seek. So hopefully hearing this um, helps you see whether or not you're doing that. Let me know in the comments, are you like, a, love the puzzle? Put it down, because that's so me. And if you're already really balanced, that's so awesome. What are you doing? Please share with us how you handle the issues that you're growing through. Like I call them the lessons of mastery. So think about what you're mastering, what keeps coming up for you to work on and how do you handle it when there's a flare up, when you're like, man, I really have got to get my hands, a handle on this. How do you manage it? Are you managing it or are you overthinking about it, over deep diving it and wearing yourself out and Hopefully, if you're in that second group where you're wearing yourself out, then this video is your sign to give yourself permission to take a break because we're not going to get there any faster by staying in it and wearing ourselves out. We'll get there faster by allowing ourselves that ease and balance in between the deep digging work we're doing. And with that, let's look at this week's karma cards. All right, so if you're new to karma cards, let me quickly show you how these work. I have three decks here, planets, signs of the zodiac, and the houses of astrology, and I've already asked my team, what's the message you have for us this week? And I've got two sets of answers, a set in red, which are action related, and a set in blue, which are outcome related. And the way that you play is you tune in with that beautiful intuition of yours and feel what is the guidance you're looking for this week? Is it action related guidance or do you want to see how things resolve? And of course, you can always choose both. And while you're choosing, let me tell you the timing for this reading. This reading is for January 31st through February 7th. And the flavor of this reading. Okay, we got something different this week. Okay, we've got the sun, right? So the sun is all about the realization, the actualization process. So we know that we're going to be actualizing something at this time in the sign of Virgo, which is all about our, our health. It, it would represent balance for sure and being of service in the fourth house. Now the fourth house represents our inner world. It represents our family and the past. Spiritual action at this time, demonstrate the serving of others as you did in the past. This is really interesting because my I was like, okay, in the past, as in like before this event happened, they went, no, go further back. And I'm like, as a child? And they're like, bingo. So as we did in the past, and what they're showing me is that, you know, children 
when they're together, they also have issues that come up for them, but they never get fixated on things and stay on it too long. I mean, we sometimes think of that as a short tension span and it's just that they're really present. So it's like if they see a friend who's crying, they would go up to it and go, what's wrong? And the friend would tell them what's wrong and they're like, I'm sorry, you know, I hope that you feel better you know, want to play ball with me? And the kid would be like, okay. And the next thing you know, they're playing ball. So whatever the issue was, it was addressed. There was energy given to it. There was an exchange that happens. And then they're moving through it. Like they're recognizing that part of moving through it isn't so much dwelling on it or staying with it and going over it, but like, how can I help you shift energy? Which is such a beautiful idea. And I think that as we're adults, and the more that we're doing the inner growth work, we can get really into the digging, right? I want to dig around. I want to figure out how that works. But at some point, we need to fact focus in on like, how can I help you shift this energy? And that's what I'm getting from them. It's, And this is so interesting because it's a delicate art, right? The child stays present. They're not shifting it before it's time. They're shifting it at the right time. And that just comes from being completely present with the other person. So the key is our presence and the goal is to create the shift. And when we do those things together, it's a beautiful and easy process. It's going to help us move through some of these heavier cycles where we can be with each other and not overwhelm each other or drain each other or rehash something to death, but rather stay present and when that energy shows you, go with the shift rather than trying to stay in the issue. Mental action at this time, realize the details of your home base or your family. Okay, so what they're specifically telling me about here is home base is the keyword that they're looking at and it's the energy of your environment. So is your environment helping you to shift or relax or stay balanced or is it causing more stress or emphasizing what's going on? Because the crazy cool thing about us is that we can work on a problem from one or two angles. We can work at it from the inside or the emotional state and we can also work it from outside and the physical state. As long as we're connecting the two together, they will impact each other. And it's like, you can change it from either direction. They will, because you'll end up either working on it on the inside and reflecting it out or cleaning up the reflection and affecting the inside. So here's a few examples of that. If you find that um, you're feeling really low and depressed and you're, you know, always wearing the same clothes and you haven't washed them and they're baggy and, and kind of like just as you put them on, you feel that depressive state. Well, you could either shift that by acknowledging and dealing with the depression and what's causing that for you. Or you can shift it by taking off those clothes, washing them, jumping in the shower, washing that off. Like, And by doing that, it's starting to balance or rebalance the state. Now, it's not enough to do the external. It has to connect to the internal, meaning while you're shifting the external, your internal starts to shift. The internal awareness is like, wow, that was a really heavy energy and I've been carrying that around for so long. And um, what else in my environment reflects back to me this heaviness, like a, a sink full of dirty dishes would reflect back, at least it would reflect back chaos or avoidance or depression or being upset or you know there's a lot of things that could reflect back to you and by clearing that you are addressing something and that's addressing it on the inside as well so again there's two ways to tackle an issue internal to external and external affecting the internal so they're saying look around at your home base because your home is the direct external reflection of what's going on inside so it's the encapsulation of your physical energy field in the physical space. And what I mean by that is like your energy is radiating through this space. So when your energy is low or you're not feeling good, you will feel that in your space. Others will feel it too, right? So when you are cleaning up the energy, 
in your space, it will start to impact what's going on inside. And so they're asking you to look around. Is your environment supporting you feeling balanced? Is it supporting you feeling calm or healed or like you have space to heal? Or is it really telling you a story of maybe chaos or stress or overwhelm or avoidance or procrastination? Take a look around and see. And you know, what I would say is the idea here is not to tackle your entire home. That would be too overwhelming. But one of the ways that you can create movement in your life is to create movement in your home in an area of stagnation. For example, let's say your closet is a hot mess. There's stuff on the floor, the hangers are all jammed together, weird clothes are, you know, half on, half off. There's you know, shoes just kicked in there, that would represent a type of chaos that's on the subconscious level because anything hidden where you could close a door or close a drawer represents the subconscious mind. It means it's the stuff I'm not looking at, but there's chaos in it. So by dealing with, let's say, that closet where there's clearly stagnation, the energy is not in order or flowing, if you dealt with the closet, you would start to ease the chaos and disorder in the subconscious mind and start to create balance there. And you will feel, and that's why we feel good when we organize these spaces like closets because it's actually having a psychological impact on us. And it's letting us know we can address things from that level too. So if the internal feels like a knot and you're like, I don't even know where to start, this is a lot, it's too big to change, it's a pattern I've had forever. Find what you would associate with that energy in your home or work on a place where you're like, I can't touch this yet and start working with it. Do it in small batches if you need to, but start working on it and you'll notice that the, t the knot inside yourself starts to loosen. All right, physical action at this time. Act like a leader, do what you must do and do what makes you feel secure. So both Virgo and the sun are challenging us to be in our sovereignty. The sun is the sign of sovereignty. It's the, the planet or rather the star that would rep represent sovereignty. Virgo is a sign that is all about organization. Like it really is the one that could whip your life into shape right? I bet you Virgos out there are like, mm -hmm. <laughs> Virgos have that amazing power. Um, and whipping your life into shape is what will make you feel secure. And again, the sun's just saying, don't wait for someone to tell you to do this. Don't wait for it to be so in your face that uh, you have to do it. Take charge of it now. There is some place that you can bring your attention to. And by doing so, that does create security. It feels good. It's like once you tackle a challenge, whether it's a messy closet or uh, an emotional pattern, and you've got that awareness and you start pulling it apart and understanding it, that does create a sense of security because the challenge is actually what creates a sense of security within us. Not the solution, but our ability to overcome that challenge, which is why we're given challenges. The challenge is what grows you, not the necessarily the outcome. The outcome is a result of you overcoming your challenge, but it's that ability to face it and recognize the power within you to do something about it, that's the actual growth. That's where the leadership shows up in you. And so it's letting you know that it's time to just get in there and work on something. And like I said, with the fourth house activated, that is very much your home or a key relationship that feels like home, but it's letting you know the the security you seek is simply around you. And again, there's you've got to see the connection between inner world, which also is represented by the fourth house, and your home environment, because it's the direct reflection of you. And if you're with other people, sure, they're reflected in there, but as you clean up your side of the street, it'll be clear for them to see what they need to clean up, right? So this is it's an interesting dynamic. There's there's definitely 
an element of work here, but the work has the payoff of creating that stabilizing and securing feeling that you're looking for right now. Now let's look at outcomes for the sun in Virgo in the fourth house of your home, the past, and your inner world. Spiritual outcome at this time is the creation of methods for the healing power of what makes you feel secure. So the good news is once you get started and if you need to start with something small, do it. There's a basket right next to my computer right here that is overflowing with books. Now the basket is keeping it kind of organized, but it still looks a little chaotic to me. And the reason I bring that up is because I could tackle just that and win a little point of, oh, that felt better. Like I got through that. Like that wasn't that hard. Once you start that, then the rampage of ease kicks in. And what I mean by that is the more little wins you get, the more dopamine hits, the easier it feels to do it. Then you start kind of like getting high off of that. And what I, <laughs> and you know, for those who, who read, you know, Marie Kondo, but there really is sort of a high you get off of it because you get a dopamine hit every time you do it. So let's say you organize your bedside table drawer that would give you a little kick. And then you're like, oh my God, that felt so good. Now, what else can I do? And that's kind of naturally what happens. So they're letting you know, like even just tapping in a little bit to this and let's say, let's tackle the external world right now. Cause that's what they're asking us to do. The internal is activated. You've been thinking about it. You probably are already working on it. Now let's tackle the external correlation to what's going on. Do a little, do a little organization, do a little tidy up here, do a little letting go, right? Do a little cleaning around that and find that little sense of like, okay, I feel like I got this. Like I feel better now. Once you start riding that wave, it just keeps building and you feel better and better. You feel more and more secure, more like you've got hold of this. And if you can also remind yourself that everything that I'm kind of tidying up here, if you can identify what it correlates to. For example, I'm looking at this basket. It's got work things in it. So I know tidying that up is correlating to my internal world around work. Well, I probably feel better about some of my work stuff um, as I tidy that up. Just like the closets, the things under the beds, the things hidden in cupboards and drawers all represent different parts of your subconscious mind. So as, as you're tidying up, if you could just take a minute and think about, well, what does this represent? Make it really literal because it is really literal, right? So um, like I said, it's a basket of work stuff. It correlates to my work. When you're doing that, you're really activating this connection that what I'm doing out here is reflecting back in here and helping me work through that on the inside mental outcome at this time, the gaining of respect for or from the analyzing of support. Now this goes back to what the team was talking about, like making sure that we are balanced in how we're getting support from others, but also how we're supporting others. Remember the analogy that they gave us about how children offer each other support and work through things. It's about presence and it's about shifting. And so it's letting us know, like, let's look at how we're offering support. Am I, you know, going into things and and asking you to rehash all these things or as you're working through it? Am I, um, how am I supporting other people as they work through their things? And how am I asking for support? And is it, is there balance to it? Do I feel balanced about how I handle that? Um, and do I feel balanced about how I give it? And as we analyze this and go through it, we get clearer on uh, how we can show up and maybe where we're giving too much or taking too much and create subtle changes there that'll just feel better for both parties. Physical outcome at this time, things brought to light or life resulting from the perfectionism of your home base or family. So again, as we're working on clearing our home base, because we're clearing up energy, and as we clear up the energy, we're clearing it up inside. We're going to have a lot of ahas as we work through these things. Again, things should start to feel better uh, as you organize 
little aspects of your home. And like I said, you might go on a full on kick um, where you, you make a total transformation. You don't have to, that's not what this is suggesting, but you might find it feels so good that you end up doing some real transformation. And I have to tell you, every time I've gotten that impulse to do that kind of uh, organizing work and clean something up, something always comes through. It's, I don't even know what it's going to be, but it, it's always something that's wonderful and delightful. And it, I immediately know it was because I cleaned up that energy, because I organized it, because organizing that energy helped me organize it inside myself. My thoughts got more organized and it just allowed this abundance to flow in right and so i'm not saying do it for the reward but it is rewarding and oftentimes you've opened up channels of energy you didn't even realize were stuffed up until you che you cleared it out um so expect some movement from doing it and let me know what happened have you already received this message internally and just felt the impulse to work on something and what was the result of that do you feel clearer about it does it feel lighter um, do you feel more focused by doing it and if you're just hearing this message and you're like okay Therese and team I'll take that challenge and I'm gonna go I'm gonna go tidy up that drawer that basket and see what happens let me know did you feel that shift what happened did you end up getting so excited about how different it felt that you tackled another space and did you notice that sense of like security, that sense of feeling more grounded and like your space has opened up for you? Did you notice that as you moved through it? And of course, I'll be doing it over here. Like that basket is now like, I got my laser focus <laughs> on clearing this basket and I cannot wait. Um, and that'll just be the start, I know it. So if you are liking these videos, please like, share and subscribe leave comments below it really helps with the algorithm on my channel and also i just want to know how is this working for you are you benefiting from this information is there topics you want to hear about and i will do separate videos on those because i'm always going to be bringing you the karma cards so until next week i'm sending you so much love Mwah.